ворвались. An epidemic of cholera is spreading among Russian military personnel in Kherson Oblast and Crimea following a Russian terrorist attack on the Kakovka hydroelectric power plant, the Atesh partisan movement reported on Telegram. Several Russian deaths due to the disease have been reported. The latest information reveals that numerous occupiers with suspected cases of cholera are being admitted to military hospitals on a daily basis. The targeted units along the Kherson direction positioned along the North Crimean Canal, are losing their operational capabilities and are being evacuated to the rear for treatment, the message reads. It is known that several military personnel have already died. The cholera epidemic most likely arose due to the Russians using water from open sources. It is noted that they are facing difficulties in obtaining bottled or purified water. Naturally, the undermining of the Kakovka Dam has caused colossal damage to the environment, resulting in the outbreak of numerous diseases we have yet to hear about. We urge the residents of Kherson Oblast and Crimea to exercise particular caution regarding the water they consume, Atesh added. Deputy Minister of Health and Chief Sanitary Dr. Ihor Kuzin had previously stated that a cholera outbreak could occur following the Russian invaders' sabotage of the Kakovka Dam. Furthermore, contaminants that have entered the Dnepro River as a result of the Russian terrorist act may cause acute gastrointestinal infections, viral hepatitis, and botulism. During the night of June 6, Russian forces detonated the Kakovka Hydro Power Station, which they had controlled for over a year. Cities and villages downstream along the Dnepro River were partially or completely flooded. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky described the Russian terrorist attack on the Kakovka plant as the largest man-made environmental catastrophe in Europe in decades. According to the Ministry of Internal Affairs, as of June 14, more than 3,000 individuals have reported their flooded homes to law enforcement authorities. A total of 3,761 people have been evacuated from Kherson and Mykolaiv oblasts. Ukrainian forces managed to seize the village of Pyatichatki in the Southern Front. During the fight, Russian deputy commander of the Storm Ossetia Battalion, Tekhov Ivengo, died in Pyatichatki. Russian sources claim that along with him, almost an entire battalion of more than 300 fighters died during recent fights for the small village. Footage shows Russian forces left Pyatichatki and Ukrainian forces entered the village. However, liberated seems slightly too early as Ukrainians are hit as hell by everything the Russians have in use, every few seconds. Hard to say if this shelling intensity is bearable for long. After the Ukrainian counteroffensive slowed down in front of Orykiv and Velika Novosilka, the Ukrainian army opened another line of attack on the Zaporizhia front yesterday morning, Pyatichatki. As with Orykiv, apparently Tokmak is the goal. Early in the morning, the Ukrainian army first set up a smokescreen and demined an access point with the USM-58 Miklik mine clearance system with detonation hoses. Then the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade stormed the Russian positions with infantry fighting vehicles and tanks. At the end, Ukrainians managed to take the village, but they are under heavy Russian artillery. A T-64 BV of the Ukrainian 35th Marine Brigade attacking the Storozhov area survived two PG-7 VR tandem heat RPG. One missed, and another hit the reactive armor on the side of the tank, damaging it. All the crew were okay, and the tank is being repaired. <laughs> But an assault by the 47th Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Ground Forces on the town of Robotyne, along the Orykiv front line in the Zaporizhia region, was said to have been crushed by Russian forces utilizing artillery and helicopters earlier today, with Ukrainian losses claimed to be upwards of 50 soldiers, two tanks, and two APC, while a handful of other soldiers and officers were captured as prisoners of war. 
Ukrainians have to change this strategy fast, otherwise they have unacceptable losses. Prigozhin said, By the 18th of June, 2023, 32,000 persons who were previously convicted and participated in the special military operation as part of Wagner PMC have gone home as their contract ended. Great news for Russia! 32,000 criminals returned to Russia from war. They have already killed, robbed, raped. They are not afraid of using weapons and probably own these weapons. Russia calls them heroes now. Putin started to stammer when it came to Zaluzhny. Was it a coincidence? Zaluzhny, yes, Vladimir Vladimirovich. Where is Zaluzhny? There is a channel where Zaluzhny is. I know. I think that I know. Ну, вы у него спросите, где. Но для этого нужно перейти на иностранный язык. Мне кажется, что он за границей. Я могу ошибаться. What's going on? High-quality mock-ups of Russian S-300 and S-400 anti-aircraft missile launchers have reportedly been spotted in the U.S. And this is San Diego. Really? What's going on? Some funny shit is going on in the USA. Combat readiness check, Idaho Falls, Idaho. father comes back home from war to attend his daughter's graduation ceremony. After a short vacation, he will return to the army to defend Ukraine. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.